and Barney Hines. It was the despair of the officers of the first AIF, and the Kaiser branded him a barbarian, typical of Australian troops on the Western Front. The German emperor made good his words by putting a price on his head, alive or dead. Private number 2296, John Barney Hines, was the, of the AIF's 45th Battalion. He was also a kleptomaniac, who became known in the trenches as the Souvenir King. But he was one of the bravest soldiers at the front, and he would have been decorated many times had it not been for his lack of military disciplines. Barney Hines earned his nickname because he had the incurable habit of hijacking medals, badges, rifles, helmets and watches from the bodies of the German dead, and in some times, of those he captured. And he brought the Kaiser's wrath down upon his head when a photographer took his picture. On September the 27th, 1917, showing him surrounded by all the loot from the Third Battle of Ypres. Prints were circulated among the diggers and invariably some fell into the hands of German soldiers, from whence they made their way to the infuriated Kaiser. Born in Liverpool, England, 1873, Barney Hines was always a rebel. Of Irish descent, he ran away to enlist in the army at the age of 14 but was dragged home by his mother. Two years later, he joined the Australian Navy and saw action during the Boxer Rebellion when he served on a gunboat chasing pirates in the China Sea. Discharged the following year, he went gold seeking around the world and was in South Africa when the Boer War broke out. He served throughout. He was a scout of various British units. He was working in a sawmill in Australia when World War I broke out in August 1914. Despite being in his early 40s, he immediately tried to enlist but was turned down on medical grounds. Undeterred, he haunted recruiting centres until he was accepted to serve in France in 1916 as a part of a reinforcement for the 45th Battalion. And once in France, the legend of this huge, powerful man who never showed fear began. He generally disdained conventional weapons such as his 303 rifle, preferring to go into action with two sandbags packed with Mills bombs. His commanding officer had a brainwave and gave him a Lewis gun, which was an immediate success. Hines was entranced by its spraying effect and announced, this thing will do me. You can hose the bastards down. Another nickname he earned was Wild Eyes. And at a later date, the commanding officer was heard to say, I always felt secure when Wild Eyes was about. He was a tower of strength in the line. I don't think he knew what fear was and he naturally inspired confidence in officers and men. One of Heinz's pastimes was prowling around collecting prisoners and loot with enthusiasm. On one occasion, annoyed at a sniper fire from the German pillbox, he ran straight to it, leapt up onto its roof and performed a war dance while taunting the Germans to come out. When they failed to comply, Hines lobbed a couple of grenades into them through the gun port. A few minutes later, the 63 Germans who had survived staggered out with their hands above their heads and Hines collected his souvenirs before herding his prisoners back to the Australian lines. His booty wasn't confined to portable keepsakes. At Villas No, he liberated a piano which he managed to keep for several days until he was persuaded to give it away. On another occasion, he scored a grandfather clock, which he carried back to the trenches, but after its hourly chimes were found to attract German fire, his mates blew it up with what else? A Mills bomb. When the AIF reached Amiens, they found the beautiful cathedral city deserted. It was too much for Heinz. He disappeared and was finally sprung by British military police in the vaults of the Bank of France, where it already squirreled away millions of francs, neatly packed in suitcases. He was hauled off for questioning by the British, who, nonplussed on what to do with the reprobate, returned him to his unit. Later, he was to boast that his escapade had cost him no more than 14 days' pay and he'd been allowed to keep the banknotes that he'd stuffed into his pockets. There were some near misses, too, at Passchendaele. He was the only survivor of a direct hit on a Lewis gun nest. Blasted 20 metres and with the soles of his boots blown off, he crawled back, got the gun working and continued firing until he fainted from wounds in his legs. Hines was also renowned for the party he held at Villers-Bretonneau after he found 
a cachet of 1870 champagne and tinned delicacies. It was to be his last party for some time. Just after it ended, he scored a bullet, a wound over his eye, another in his leg and a whiff of gas. Despite protests, he was hospitalised at a Tarples nearly blind. A few nights later, the Germans bombed the hospital, causing 3,000 casualties. Heinz hauled himself out of bed, found a broom which he used as a crutch, and spent all night carrying the wounded and dying to safety. After that, he was invalided home, and in the ensuing years, despite his wounds, he worked as a drover, shearer, prospector, and timber cutter. He volunteered for World War II, and when he was turned down, he was now in his 60s, he stowed away on a troop ship. He was caught before the vessel got through the heads and put ashore. After a colourful life, Barney Hines died in Concord Repatriation Hospital on January the 30th, 1958, aged 84. France, look what you've done to bloody France, mate. You made a bloody mess of it. Kaiser, 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 Kaiser. Yeah. Kaiser. Yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick Kaiser. Oh. Cigarette. Thank Relax, pal. We're here for a good time, not a long time. Six bob a day. Kaiser kaput. Kaiser kaput. Six bob a day. Six bob a day. Six bob a day. Six bob a day. Yeah, yeah, six bob a day. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's yeah, oh, cigarette and good. Kinder? Kinder? Ja, ja ein. Kinder. Ein Kinder. Ja. Sieben Kinder. Sieben? Sieben, sieben Kinder. I reckon you should have shot him. At least taken this. He's spent, mate. Look at him. He's... The, bar the barrage has busted him. He's a broken man. Pretty bloody. The kids will love that, eh? They'll think you're a bloody hero. I won't tell.